Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for not asking my father-in-law to leave my house after my divorce because my ex-wife no longer has a mom? My ex-wife, 35 female, Kate, and I, 36 male, grew up as next-door neighbors. We, along with our siblings, basically lived at both houses and were parented by the adults at whichever house we happened to be in at the time. My dad died when I was a teenager and her dad became kind of a stand-in dad to me from then on. Kate and I dated throughout high school, took a break to do our own thing in college, but that only lasted two years before we got back together. We moved in together and transferred to a larger university to finish our undergrad. We took advantage of summer and winter term courses to speed things up and get a few more degrees faster. Up until the age of 26 when we were both finishing up school, her father supported us financially where we couldn't. He had a very good business and was quite well off. My mom was doing okay, but she had pseudo retired to Florida by this time and was living with her retired sister, she couldn't help much. Kate and I had a rocky start to our careers, moving around frequently, and one of us always having a commute that sometimes took us across an entire state. Five years ago, her dad lost his business and most of his wealth due to a few bad investments, and bad intent from a business partner, so he moved in with us and we began supporting him in return for all of the years he'd done that for us. We had an in-law suite already for my mom to use when she visited. He and I continued our father-slash-son type relationship, and it was all working out great. About a year before COVID, she began taking long trips and refusing to tell me where she was going. By the summer, she was asking for a divorce, saying that she had changed too much to continue our marriage. She got half of most everything, both cars, half of our savings, our vacation home and various appliances, plus all of the expensive jewelry I'd bought for her over the years. She promptly sold the vacation home and the jewelry, and had much more liquid funds than I did. Most of mine was wrapped up in the house and investments. I had to use a good chunk of the savings to buy a new car and appliances. Now, she and her friends are messaging me quite hateful things because she just found out that her dad never moved out when we divorced because she rarely talks to him now. Her mom died when we were in college, and she is accusing me of stealing her remaining parent. Father-in-law doesn't have the money to move out, or a reason to. She says I should have given her dad a large sum of money to move out after the divorce, even though she was the one with the liquid funds at the time, that it was inconsiderate to continue to live with her dad when we aren't together anymore. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You're divorced now, you can have your father figure as a roommate if you and he both agree to it. And how can you steal her dad from her, when their relationship was so distant that she didn't even know he was still living with you? Sounds like she dropped the rope on that relationship herself. This is a her problem, and she needs to build a bridge and get over it. Hijacking here to say, OP, you are a wonderful person. You are showing loyalty and kindness to someone who has been in your life for many years. If everyone behaved like you, there would be far fewer posts here. Your ex-wife on the other hand. Not the a-hole. It sounds to me like you have a much deeper relationship than just a standard father-slash-son-in-law. He obviously means a lot to you and has supported you in the past. I think it's admirable that you want him to stay, some people would kick him out from spite. If she is so worried about him, then she should offer him a place to live. The idea that you should give him a chunk of money to leave is laughable. Shouldn't she be responsible for that? I'm sorry your marriage ended like that, but you sound like a good person and she obviously didn't appreciate that. There will be someone better out there for you someday I know. This, and she had the audacity to tell him to give her dad money to move out because she doesn't like it. Not the a-hole. How do you not know where your own father is living? Your ex is just trying to hurt you, and she is obviously not willing to help her own father out. Talk with you father-in-law and if your situation works for the two of you, Block your ex and file harassment charges if she doesn't leave you alone. And why would you have to give him money after the divorce? I'm sorry that your relationship turned so ugly. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for saying to my brother that his kid's future isn't my problem? I, 23 female, lost my dad three years ago. It's been hard, and in that time, I needed someone and none of my siblings were there for me. I have a different dad from them and that kind of drove a wedge between them and me. He was in my life more than their dad was, and I guess for that they hated me. My dad was really well off and in his will, he basically left everything to me. With the help of my uncle, I was able to learn what things needed to be done so I can claim what he left and learn how to properly manage a house and car. Anyways, it's a big house. 
It's four bedroom two bath and my best friend currently lives with me. I use the other two as a study room and art room. My brother, 31 male, has been talking to me lately about the house. He currently lives in a two bedroom apartment with his wife and two kids, six and eight. He's been looking for an upgrade and basically figured I'd be willing to sell the house to him. I told him I didn't want to sell the house, but I'd help him look for one. He said no, and that he wanted mine. His wife likes how spacious it is, and the backyard is large enough for the kids to play and for them to get a dog. My brother went on about how I didn't need a house, because I'm young and don't have a family, so it'll benefit him more than me. It was hard for me to say no but I did, and felt bad enough about it. He and his wife have been calling and texting non-stop, asking if I'd changed my mind. The final straw, was when my brother called and said I was putting my niece and nephew's future at stake by forcing them to be stuck in a small apartment when they need more space to learn and grow. I feel like I'm the a-hole, because my reply to that was, their future is not my concern, nor is it my problem, and I left it at that. My other brother says I'm being selfish to only think about myself and not care for my brother and his family. He agrees with him and believe I don't need a large house because it's just me, and they believe I don't know how to own a house like an adult. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. First, it's your house to do whatever you want with. Second, if he can afford a house of that size, he can afford another house of that size. What he really means is sell me the house super cheap, or even give me the house, and then, even money says he'd flip it in a couple of years anyway. Sorry you're having to go through this. What he really means is sell me the house super cheap, or even give me the house, and then, even money says he'd flip it in a couple of years anyway exactly. I'd lay odds that there are plenty of four bed houses with large yards in the area, but only one whose owner the brother thinks he can badger into letting him have the house for a song, because we're family. Not the a-hole. Their argument is basically give me your house, I want it. If they were willing to pay market rates, they could find a house anywhere, but they don't. I am sure you pay above market rates when you want to take someone's current house, not the a-hole, and they can screw right off with their ridiculous entitlement. The house is your inheritance, it's your home, and they have no right to make demands, or to try and guilt or manipulate you into selling. The only people not acting like adults in this situation, is them. Not to mention, the house probably has huge sentimental value to OP, as it was left to her by her deceased dad. I wouldn't be surprised if OP wanted to live there for the rest of her life, and raise her future kids in it. Edit. Damn. I went to sleep and woke up with so many replies. My PMs are filled with people calling me a liar and a bad sister for putting my friend above my family. For one, I'm not lying. I'd never in a hundred years lie about something like this. I was hesitant in posting because of this exact reason, I really can't prove I'm not lying without exposing personal details, so if you can't take my word for it, I'm sorry. And two, my friend is the closest thing I had to having a sister. She was there for me through thick and thin. I read the comments, and thank you for the tips and suggestions. I'm going to get in contact with my uncle today and talk to him about it, and if needed, I'll find a lawyer. Also, I do realize I could have worded it better and been, so I think I owe him an apology for that much. One more thing, about the questions on why he wanted my house specifically? A lot of things come into play. All around it's in the perfect places it's close. to many places like grocery stores, schools, and close to his job. He did offer me a price once before, 
but it was less than half of what the house was worth, and I already knew if I accepted it, I'd be a joke. For the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepmom she needed to move out in a few months? Am I the a-hole for tell my stepmom she will have to move in a few months? Hi everyone, this is not a legal question. I have already checked on this with a lawyer, and through my school's legal department, and I'm illegally fine. This is just a moral judgment. My dad married my stepmom seven years ago. She's not a bad woman, and she's not a gold digger either. She and my dad are legitimately in love. However, my dad doesn't have much time left due to medical issues. He likely won't make it till summer. My dad and I weren't close. He was military, and if he wasn't gone, he was in a horrible mood. My mom was in the picture, but she wasn't a peach either, so I was raised by my grandparents in their home. Neither of my parents could tell you my birthday three years ago, to give you an idea of it. I don't hate either of my parents, but I don't really recognize them as my parents either. My dad has been a much better dad to my stepmom's son which is good, and I'm grateful for that, however I don't feel a bond with my stepbrother or stepmom either. When my grandma passed, she left me her home in the her will, as that was what my grandparents wanted. My dad and his wife moved in with my permission while I was away at school. It was no secret that I intended to move back and live alone in my home, which has caused some conflicts in the past. This past weekend while I was studying, stepmom sent me an email filling me in on debt again, telling me about her COVID layoff, and asking what my plans were after this last semester, so I told her I was returning home, and had a job lined up by an old friend. Stepmother asked if I felt it would be crowded there, and I reminded her that it was my home, so if anyone was uncomfortable, they would need to relocate. Stepmother pushed back a little bit, and I reminded her again the home was mine, and that they needed to be ready to leave by summer's end as this is my last semester, and I wanted to give them plenty of time to relocate. My dad ended up calling me later and tried to guilt me, however, I reminded him that he didn't really raise me, and I was under no obligation to help them as much as I already had. I called his wife after, and told her that after my dad passed, she was gone for what she had just tried to do. The summer deal was off, and I would evict her after 60 days, which is still more than required. I told her my dad chose a military career over his son, and when he wasn't lacing his boots, he was yelling at me or throwing stuff. Stepmother brought her child's education into it because they couldn't afford to live in a good school district when this was over, but I told her neither he or she was my concern. I told my friends about this, and they all thought I was right because of what I've already done for them and what my dad did in the past. They have said the stepmother is just another person in the world, and it sucks for her, but you can't set yourself on fire to keep them warm. What do you guys think? Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole at all. You are so generous for even giving them 60 days, let alone let them live till summer. I'm amazed by the entitlement of your father. It was your grandparents' choice to leave you the house not your father. Stick to what you are doing and don't look back. They don't deserve you. I promise you if the house had gone to dad, stepmom would have wound up with the house, and OP would be the one looking for a place. Smart grandparents knew what they were doing. Not the a-hole, but I would not have gotten into this in the first place. Once someone's in your home, it's a lot harder to get them out. That, and wear and tear. Anyway, they aren't your relations, and have clearly got it in their head that the house is theirs and you have inconvenienced them by coming home. Good luck. Yeah. I shudder to think of the ways they might try to screw OP over, when they're feeling jaded before the eviction. Not the a-hole. They knew your plans beforehand of returning back to your own home. They were staying at someone else's house, I assume rent free? You had given them 6 months notice to find a new place. You don't owe your dad or your stepmom. You deserve your own space and being surrounded by people who have supported you, especially during a hard time when your dad is sick. I'm sorry for what you're experiencing. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for knowingly letting my son go bankrupt, and refusing to help? In a predicament with my morals, perhaps you can help. The story. My son has started a string of unsuccessful businesses, two of which I have funded for him, money isn't an issue for me, due to success selling a large software company 10 years ago. Each time, I have assisted in bailing him out. However, the last time, I told him it would be my last, and that I'd rather he asked me for some business advice and mentorship rather than my money. He started up another company in June of 2020, focusing on a growing sector of the technology industry. 
but he also ran this business into the ground and refused my mentorship. As expected, he also wanted me to bail him out. This time to the tune of $1.2 million owed to creditors. I have the money, but it's the principle behind it. I held firm on my no. He told me he'd need to file for bankruptcy, and I said so be it. His personal bankruptcy filing had just completed today, and I admit I perhaps wasn't fully aware of the scope of destruction he would see. His family have lost their home and moved into a trailer, lost their cars, many belongings, and he also lost a painting his late mother crafted which is worth around $250,000. Basically, he is ruined, and will be for many years due to the credit hit he will take. Tonight, I learned from his wife that he's gone for emergency counseling due to everything he has lost. I am stuck in guilt over whether I should have bailed him out this time, or stuck with my decision to say no, and knowingly allow my son to dive bomb into ruin for the sake of a few hard life lessons. Was I the a-hole for not bailing him out? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. 1. It was his fault not yours. He even refused your mentorship that could have helped him not run the business into the ground. 2. If you bailed him out again, the process would like just continue. 3. You had no idea just how bad his life would turn out. Again, it's his own decisions that led to this. 4. If it comes down to it and is absolutely necessary, you could always use some of the $1.2 million he needed for the business, to help him and his family get back on their feet. Maybe buy a house and put it in a trust for the grandkid, if there is one, so they won't be homeless. Definitely reach out and talk to him. Address depression and support. Not the a-hole, though, wow. That's rough. I feel pretty confident that if you had bailed him out a third time, it would have happened yet again until something else stopped him, or you finally said no. I'm so glad to hear he's in counseling. If he's ever unable to go to therapy due to financial reasons, that could be one way for you to help and make yourself feel a little better. Exactly. If not this time, it would be the next, or the next. This was always going to happen, and better earlier before OP runs out of money. Completely not the a-hole. That said, most non-sociopathic people are not happy to see their loved ones destitute, even deservedly so, and especially not innocent ones like your daughter-in-law and grandchildren. Your feelings are understandable. That being the case, and since you do have resources to help, perhaps you could consider assisting the family in ways that do not reward him personally, or fully restore the lifestyle he lost. So, you could buy a modest home and let them live there, do not sign over the deed buy a modest car for his wife to use to run the children around, pay school fees, etc. To be clear, you have no obligation here in my opinion. But it is open to you to assist the family in ways that don't undermine the life lesson he's learned. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.